Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a forge welding divider. Today is super short video. I'm gonna make a divider for measuring billets when you're forge welding. Okay, I know this is an incredibly arcane little tool and that's why we're gonna keep it short. But uh, if you are into this stuff, this will give also a little bit of interesting perspective about some different ways of forge welding um, Damascus steel. All right, here's the theory. So when you make any kind of Damascus or folded steel of any sort, in fact, you build the layers by dividing the billet of steel, then folding it over on itself, and each time you do that, it creates more and more layers. Two, four, six, eight, sixteen doubles every time. Of course, if you start with, say, ten, then you're very quickly going to reach a very large number of layers. So, you have two choices when you're doing this kind of folding. You can chop the billet in two while it's hot and just fold it over on itself hot. Or you can cool it down, chop it up cold, clean it, restack it, re-weld it, and get lots more layers in one operation. But that operation is much more complicated and it means that you have to cool down your forge every time and cool down the billet and all that. And so uh, you're increasing the amount of time that you're um, investing in each one of those particular operations. This tool is especially useful for working the first case where you're working the hot steel, where you're diddling around with rulers and markers and so on. It's a good way to burn the crap out of yourself. And where eyeballing the cut location often leads to uneven cuts. Which in turn can gradually reduce the quality of your steel and increase the likelihood of cold shuts, bad welds, and as a result, scrapping a lot of your work. So here's the basic idea. Just a sort of accordion fold kind of thing that allows you to locate the exact center between two points. So you just expand it to the length of the billet and either mark or hot cut the center of the billet. Then whack it in half using whatever technique you want, fold it over, rock and roll. By the way, as with most of my builds, plans with all the dimensions will be available to my Patreon supporters. Any pledge level will get you access to tons of knives and tools that I've made through the years. There's a link in the description if you want to help out the channel. So, I'm using a very thin spring-tempered steel that I bought for a purpose I can't even remember quite a while back. Anyway, this is about 40 thou thick, but if I had my druthers, I'd get it a little thicker. About a sixteenth of an inch would probably be about right. Still, this works okay. First, I'll gang them together and chop two long legs and two short legs on my abrasive chop saw that correspond to the two you see in the pictures. Then we head over to drill the holes. Because this steel is pre-hardened, I'm using a carbide drill. Obviously, that wouldn't be necessary if this were mild steel or some kind of annealed tool steel. As you can see, I've stacked up all four of the metal strips. So once I drill the first set of holes, then I'll drill the second set all together so that they're all lined up correctly. If these holes aren't drilled exactly at the same distances, then the little accordion fold thing will bind up. I want to round off the top of these so that they don't pinch your fingers when you're using them. I'll do that by using this little piece of scrap wood as a sort of fixture to line them up. And then, as you'll see, I'll just round those ends off on the grinder. And also, I'll grind angles on the business end. This allows you to have a little bit more precision of where those points are on each end of the divider. Now I'm going to form the pivots by peening some rivets in here. These are quarter inch tong rivets. Of course, you could just use screws too. This will give me a really tight fit with zero play, but this is not exactly intended to be a precision measuring device. I grind the heads down till they stick out a little under an eighth of an inch. Then I'll peen them down and form the heads. I'm starting with a cross peen 
then moving to a ball peen to finish them. Why two hammers? Because I feel like it. Seriously though, the cross peen does a little bit better job of spreading out the head, while the ball peen is better for doming. But you could do the whole thing with a ball peen. The key point here is that you have to keep working them a little before you peen them to final size. If you just blast away on all four pivots, the thing will lock up and you'll never get it to move. I throw a little oil into each joint, then kind of wrestle with it a little until each joint moves smoothly, but with enough resistance that the dividers won't move out of position when you use them. They need to be tight enough that you can bang them around a little without them folding up on you. And I just repeat the same thing on each of the four joints. And that's it. Done. Here I'm chopping up a billet forged from self-smelted steel. This particular steel turned out to be hot short, so it's kind of falling apart on me, but you can see the basic idea here. I'm going straight to the hardy tool to mark them and then cut them in one operation, but you can also mark them with the hardy tool and then do the actual cut on a power hammer or a press. I won't show it here, but you could also use them to subdivide a billet you plan to clean up cold, marking it with a sharpie or whatever, having it and then having each of those halves into quarters. Works just fine for that too. Okay, hope you enjoyed that little tool. Look for me to do a video about how I process and fold tamahagane, the Japanese sword steel, uh, in a video that will probably be out in the next week or two. I'll add a link in the description when it's done. All right, guys, thanks, and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com